Hey everyone, this is One Man Zerg with UEN.com, giving you a tip today on beating Terran Mech. A lot of players complain that they can't beat Terran Mech, Terran's overpowered as Zerg. The, the Terran army is coming in a lot of shapes and sizes, Thors, Hellions, Tanks, Tanks and Marines and Hellions, um, a lot of different mixes, a lot of different positions. How do you approach a Terran base? You know, how are you going to break into that? How are you going to break up into a Terran Expo? You know, what are you going to do to get positioning on them? Well, most of the fights that you fight versus Terran, you're going to have to use some tricks and you're going to have to make sure you get positioning. This is the first fight that I want to show you. It's all about positioning. So the Zerg has a, a force on the bottom, a force on the right side, and a force that you can't see right now that's actually coming in from the back side. And so he gets this full surround on the Terran player, so he has a huge line fighting him, and then he uses Roaches a lot. Roaches versus Terran mech are really good because they're a hardy unit. They have a lot of hit points, and they can absorb damage. And Roach is backed up by another high damage dealing unit like Hydralisks um, can really do some some great damage there. He also used a uh, Neural Parasite on the Thor. That's a huge game changer in a battle. Thors do so much damage and getting them on your side can really turn it. Here's another mix. So this uh, this Zerg player has some Mutalisks and he has some Roaches and some Zerglings. And what he's going to do is interesting. He's going to go in there, pull those Thors out of position a little, and then he's going to go focus down on those Thors. So by focusing down on the Thors, he can kill them quickly and most importantly, he gets rid of the anti-air that the opponent has. So now his Mutalist, the few that he has still left, can push out without fear against those Terran units and really give the Zerg player time to rebuild and push that Terran player out of that menacing position that he was in. So you can see um, the, the Terran player here, Impact, has some tanks set up on this ramp. He has some Helians and some Marines, and he's building a bunker. And um, I'm playing against him. Actually, this is me, one man Zerg. And... I, I know that he just pushed out, he just harassed me with some Vikings, so I'm going to try and get in his base so I know what's up. So I'm going to get my roaches, I'm going to use some burrowed roaches to sneak in on his troops. And one way to deny this is to get some missile turrets, but if he's just moved out, he might not have those up, he might not have thought to build them yet. So let's see what happens. I'm going to fast forward a little. My roaches are going to move in, and you can see he's just pounding those rocks, so that's what that noise is. And uh, my roaches are going to move in. I'm going to try and get all around in here. So that way, um, my roaches, when they're unburrowed, they're going to be able to leverage that splash damage from the tanks. And then let my roaches take some of the hits from the tanks first burst, and then bring my hydras in um, after some of the tanks have been down. And then let my hydras finish off some of the units. And you can see, now this battle, although it didn't turn out overwhelmingly well, what I can do from here is you want to always keep a base advantage on your Terran opponent when you're Zerg, right? So during that battle, I'm having my expansions build, and then by defeating his army and him having a slow Terran mech army, I can easily move out to these expansions safely and then rebuild my army um, afterwards so that he's not going to do anything because he's too worried about me coming in and pressuring him again. So the first thing he's going to want to do is reinforce this line, build some more defenses, while I just worry about expanding, macroing up, rebuilding my army, and then moving back in on him later after I've got more map control and economic advantage. And here's another tip on beating Terran Mech. So you can tell this is more of a late game scenario. You can see I have an army of Ultralis, Roaches, Hydras, and some Zerglings. Just a, a mix of a lot of Zerg units. And then my opponent I know has been going a lot of Thors and uh, tanks. So I'm thinking, you know, Ultralis are a good counter for that because they do such massive damage to armor. They do like 50 damage a second to armor. It's above that actually. It's ridiculous. Um, so they're great for this. And then you can tell I've done something that you should always do in your games, which is I've creeped most of the map. So you can tell I can see all this. This is my vision actually that we're looking at right now. And um, it's of the whole map. And also the creep speeds up all my units. So Terran mech is slow. You have to use that imbalance that you have on them. And then creep helps leverage that even more. So let's watch what happens. I'm going to come up here, and my Zerglings are going to get fired at by these tanks. So when they're fired up on the tanks, I know, okay, well, I don't want to push up this ledge because it's a small ramp, and his tanks are positioned up here, so I'm probably, I don't even know what's up there, but I know there's two tanks at least, and there might be more behind that. So what am I going to do? We'll fast forward this. I'm going to bring my troops around the back, and I'm going to avoid this army. I can see this army coming in, and I know... One thing I like to do is Zerg is if they're coming in for a base, like you can see I have three bases working right now. I could easily expand to another. I'm going to go with the base trade because they're slower than me, and this way I can get in and do some real damage to them. And I'm going to use that creep because it's just going to let me shoot in so I can get to their base even faster. So I'm going to bring in my troops 
over here on his base. And you can see this is at double speed right now. And then I'm going to take down these engineering bays. So this wall off that, if I were to attack when he has troops there, would be really crappy. Now it's no big deal. And then when he brings his tanks over here, they're not sieged. So they're not as big of a threat to the rest of my troops. While his unseaged tanks are actually better against Ultralis. But siege tanks are typically in a defensive stance better against an army. And now that he's unseaged and he's moving in on me, now I can have a positioning advantage. So I'm going to see uh, see if I can go in and just push through that. And you can just see these ultras. This is at normal speed right now. They're doing, um, what is that, 44 damage a shot. So it's about three or four swipes to kill a tank. Um, if it's below health, the flow full, it's only three, you know. And then these ultras are great versus planetary fortress because you're never going to want to bring zerglings against planetary fortresses because their armor is so high and they just are going to get beat by that spread damage whereas ultras just take it so by outmaneuvering the terran player because i have creep all over the map i can see what's going on and by picking where i want to have the fight because my troops are better or faster i can win a battle but my army otherwise wouldn't have wanted to go up toe to toe and push into that terran base so how do you beat terran mech you outmaneuver them and you use the units that'll counter them to recap, you want to get a surround on your opponents from as many sides as you can, you know, drop a neural parasite, something like that, so that you can push in on your army and then close them out and then move on from there. Another thing, you want to pick off targeted units, like here he picks off all the Thors so his mutas have free reign on the rest of his troops. That's really key to gaining some advantage and delaying it. Use some tricks like Roach Burrow, you can also use um, like Baneling or Roach Bombs from Overlords. To get into your opponent's base, use that splash against them, close that range gap that you have, and then bring in the rest of your troops after you've softened them up a little. That's a really good tactic. And then, also, remember, if you're going to do that and you're going to push in and gain some time, expand and then rebuild your army because that's what you want to do. You always want to keep gaining that economic advantage for the long-term game as a Zerg player. And lastly, pick your battles. If there's a fortified position that the Terran player has, you don't want to go up against that. So use your mobility, get out, avoid their army, go into their base in a back route of somehow, and really push in on their base. When they're forced to come back at you, then you can go at their army when they're out of position, not in that fortified position, and really take advantage of that game. Um, so just a couple tricks or tips. Roaches are really robust. They have a lot of hit points and some armor, so I recommend them in the uh, earlier game versus Terran Mech. If you're playing Terran Mech late game, Ultralis do an amazing amount of damage. It's 44 per swipe. It's over 50 damage per second. I think it's the highest damage per second thing in the game. So I'd really go with them. And if you guys have any more tips and tricks that you want to have requested, I know the Terran Mech's been a big one, so we put some time into this video. Just, uh, just tell us what they are, and we'll try and provide that to you. Thanks so much for listening, and go to the UEN.com or our YouTube channel, the UEN TV, for more tips and tricks like this.